Piers Morgan to Suskid by Destiny. So I'm not going to watch the entire thing. I'll watch a little bit of it. We don't know what's happened here. You no one can yet give a legitimate ex explanation. But you're clearly implying that it is odd. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me your lunatic conspiracy theory about how odd. I don't it have was. any. If you say to me, I've been told by experts. I listen. I've been told by many experts in the last 36 experts. hours. There's an entire cultural <laughs> machine that has lied. That, there there is an that entire was it. We just cultural... in real time. That's it. What? That's what. That's so why what? conservatives deserve absolutely zero sympathy. You sound almost gleeful, Destin. I'm sorry. That makes you, frankly, despicable. I'm not going to get on my knees and say. Here we go. Former President Trump is the king of the political comeback, but even by his own lofty standards, the past four days have been utterly sensational. After coming within a hair's breadth of assassination, last night he made a stunning return to the spotlight of the RNC. And for once, the gravity of the occasion was not lost on him. J. Trump. There he is. We are grateful for you to be our nominee for the 47th By president. By the way, thank God that we have somebody who's not 80 years old that's on the ticket. I mean, Kamala's younger too, which is okay. But like this, it is like one of those things you don't really think about a lot. This is only somebody, I mean the other guy. ...of the United States of America. Well, Trump hasn't made an entrance quite like that mm -hmm. since he descended the golden escalator in 2015 to announce his first run for president. Bandaged and emotional, he walked into the arena like a UFC star and got the reception to match. Well, the many people who've criticised security failings at his rally on Saturday were quick to point out that his detail this time round mm -hmm. seems to be made up entirely of strapping men. But the Whose idea was it to have him be guarded by like some five foot three like girl this obviously overweight like who who thought that was a good idea why would you do that like focus of the night was undoubtedly trump himself a man who now looks like he's seriously preparing for a return to running the country president biden mm -hmm. meanwhile fumbled questions about his own incendiary rhetoric in the lead up to saturday's shooting you called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago, you said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. There's some dispute about the, the context, but I think you appreciate that I didn't say crosshairs. I was talking about focus on. Look, the truth of the matter was... I love how nobody said crosshairs. Nobody said that. Like, But I guess I was talking about at the time was there was very little focus on Trump's uh, agenda. Yeah, the term was bullseye. It was, a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't, I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on him. Focus on what he's doing. What a pathetic... I feel like that's the kind of clip that, like, the more I listen to it, the better it gets. ...pathetic excuse from, frankly, an increasingly pathetic president. Let's be crystal <laughs> clear. Nobody thought Biden was talking about archery when he used the word bullseye, and he knows it. The presidential move would have been to say that everyone, on all sides, needs to dial down their incendiary rhetoric. But this president hasn't looked presidential for a long time now. One positive move Biden's made in the fallout from the tragedy on Saturday is to finally order the Secret Service to protect R.F. Kennedy Jr. That's true. The last thing America needs right now is yet more political violence, especially involving a Kennedy. Well, in a moment, we'll meet tonight's panel to debate all this, but joining me now is the former counter-sniper in the State Department and the current Florida Republican Congressman, Corey Mills. Uh, Corey Mills, thank you very much indeed for joining Uncensored. First of all, I can't think of anyone better equipped in the political world than you to comment on what appears to have been a massive failing by the Secret Service on Saturday in their duty to protect President Trump. What did you make of it? Well, I just want to say I really loved your monologue just now that talked about the idea of dialing down political rhetoric on both sides, as well as the dangers of utilizing words like in the bullseye or, mm. you know, regardless of what he says he went to, to, to indicate. It's obviously what he indicated was that he wants to put him in the crosshairs. Mm. But, um, you know, I just want to go ahead and say that, you know, this, in my opinion, is such a massive failure. It's such a big negative. My opinion, honestly, is that I think that people have said all kinds of incendiary things, and I don't think anybody has a monopoly on it. I think Trump has said a lot of stuff that's, like, really, really bad. Like, you can criticize Biden, and it's like people are criticizing him because it happened to Trump. But if people had, had shot Biden's ear off instead, people would be playing all the clips of Trump saying crazy shit, too.
So, like, I, I don't think anybody has a monopoly on this. Intelligence on behalf of the advanced teams to say that a target, which is 160 yards away, perfectly adjacent to the stage, was outside the perimeter. The perimeter is formed and it's discerned by the counter sniper teams, by the advanced teams, and by the security details. I can tell you, as someone who has conducted thousands of advances, both on the Afghan and Iraq side, as well as for back home, has done uh, multiple counter sniper team deployments, looking at Overwatch positions, looking at how we react oh, and mitigate threats. Game that this in its entirety, and I, I, I'm not a conspiracist, Pierce. I'm not one who tries to find my way to a, you know, inside job type of setup, but I am also a military guy who believes in the what if scenarios of all things. And I think the American people deserve a true investigation, not by the FBI, but by Congress to look and identify every single area from local force uh, consolidation. From that will not assuage anybody's concerns that thinks that it's a conspiracy because they're just going to tell themselves that Congress is also paid off in the same way that the FBI is. Uh, there's no way for people to convince themselves that this is real. Uh, like, I'm just being honest, right? Like, it, it just... Yeah. I mean, I, that's... Is that wrong? Well, so th this is an interesting thing, right? So, like, I, I think that in order to tell whether something is like a, whether you have a position on something that's based off of logic or emotion, you should ask yourself the question, what would it take for me to change my position? And what I think the case is with this is that Nothing will change people's position on this. I don't think that there is an entity that could investigate this that would make everybody happy. Do you see what my point is here? People don't trust them, and that's all there is to it. Except hard evidence? No, they just say that's fake. Looking at the cooperations that were on the ground from resource allocations mm -hmm. by the director of the Secret Service. And I think that people deserve to feel confident that this wasn't anything but massive malice or negligence as opposed to something that was intentional. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, there's some extraordinary details emerging. Uh, local uh, news network Earth in Logic. Pittsburgh yep. has reported a member of Beaver County, Pennsylvania's emergency services unit, Notice the suspicious man on the roof near the rally at 5.45 p.m. called it in and took a picture of the person, right. the shooter, 26 minutes before he was able to fire off eight shots. Uh, there's then the footage, as we've seen, of other members of the public. 26 minutes. Man. Seeing him crawling across the rooftop. That's right. Uh, there's also snipers who are in position who appear to be looking at this guy too, and yet he's still able to fire eight bullets, which seems completely extraordinary it to seems me. Very especially if it's all happening 150 metres from the... the there's you know, also another component to this that I think that people aren't bringing up, but when things happen like this, it can be very hard for you to get people to believe that it was actually just incompetence. And it really undermines people's trust in things like the Secret Service or things like the government in general, right? So, like, when something like this happens and it seems like there's no way this could have happened, it destroys their credibility. And I think that does, like, a... It has, like, a big ripple effect. And it, it hurts a lot of other things, like, tangentially and, like, just as a reaction to people distrusting them directly. President Trump, who has been president... It's very bad well be for that again. to be happening. Well, it seems very suspicious. You know, in police work, they call these clues. The thing that really yeah. was sounding off to me, though, is the fact that, you know, at a minimum, let's just go ahead and give every single possibilities of just negligence as opposed to something else. You know, you could have put and said, there's not enough resources. All right, fine. Let's put a patrol car in the parking lot of AGR, which was the company, with the doors locked and the lights on. There's a deterrence. Yeah. Let's look at the fact that an emergency comms channel should have been set in place for the Secret Service and the local That's police force in cooperation and coordination so that when that officer who came to the rooftop and says that he had the rifle pointed at him could have immediately descended. I actually think, by the way, that the lack of deterrence would actually be a a piece of argumentation that would support the fact that he acted independently. Because if you assume that he was acting under direction to do this, then the deterrence would not be a factor because he would do it anyway. So in fact, I think the deterrence argument works against it, but I can see what he's saying, right? It still should have happened and it didn't happen.
did and keeping himself safe and also said shoot her on the roof shoot her on the roof shoot her on the roof which would allow the detail to have then immediately gotten on the stage to protect the president there's so much about this pierce not to mention there was a water tower that was only a couple hundred yards away which is a sniper's paradise that people aren't even talking about this shot pierce is so simple and i just want to paint a picture for your viewers which is that if you were to take not even a sniper rifle but your basic production rifle that comes off an assembly line that you could buy in a, a average store and you were to take a person with very little experience in 10 minutes i could train them to be able to utilize this rifle to hit targets at a pie sized plate at 200 yards without a problem well you're not so that guy's a fu that, damn that kid's an idiot then he a fucking dumbass <laughs> if that's true bro like <laughs> what a fucking idiot <laughs> that's retardy oswald man well, actually, I mean, just on that yeah. point, when I was uh, at CNN, I spent a day down in Texas uh, at a gun store and a gun range, and I did end up firing an AR-15, which is believed to be the semi-automatic rifle mm -hmm. the shooter used. That's right. And is the preferred weapon of choice for most mass shooters these days. And I was uh, absolutely staggered about how light and easy it was to use and how very quickly, how accurate I was able to fire it, never having fired guns in my entire life. So I can completely endorse what you just said. It is a very easy yes. to use weapon. Um, I mean, like you have, I mean, I've look, jo look at Joseph Coney's army. I mean, like there, you got eight year olds with AK-47s. I mean, it's not complicated to use a gun, I think in most cases. Coney so 2024. I wonder how many years would have to pass for the world to get dumb enough that people just vote for him for president instead of trying to stop him. I think it'll take maybe 40 years for us to get there. It's one that would then, if you think about it, we call it minutes year of angle on each yeah. rifle, which means that's essentially, it looks at your bullet trajectory, your bullet compensation, all these different things. But what you would say is that at 100 yards, you have a one inch grouping capability at 200 to two inch, et cetera, et cetera, which means yeah. that at 160 yards, that rifle, let's just say it's not even a good rifle, it's only a two MOA rifle, is only shooting a 3.2 inch grouping. Mm -hmm. The average head is six by eight. The average yeah. shoulder is 20 inches long. The average head to waist is 40 inches. So when you think Think about the grouping is, by the way, I'm sure some people might not understand this. This is like the acceptable size that the bullet can hit just by, you know, just technical limitations. This is a game of milliseconds and millimeters that yeah. saved the president's life from being an attempted to an actual assassination. This is really something that I hate to say it. I have to just be like this, but it's got to be divine intervention to the th thoughts that this didn't eliminate and take out the life of Donald Trump and the fact that it should have been prevented from the beginning. Corey, the other thing oh that struck boy. me as, as oh extraordinary boy. in terms of the way the Secret Service responded Hello? to the sh Hey. I'm wrong. Let me put you on speaker. Go ahead. Okay, you're wrong on grouping. How? Uh, you remember when I told you that... Uh, when you know, you're shooting target, uh, you gotta you gotta if you if you get two of them uh, outside of the uh, ten ring. Yeah, no. One over in the eight, you just just look, just throw away that target, go to the next target. Yeah. What about it? What, what does that have to do with grouping? Okay. Well, I'm getting there. Just shut up. Uh, the uh, um, the um, uh, the getting all those shots in there, hitting the ten ring. Uh huh close together that's the grouping it's hitting everything you know it's get it, it's the it's the spread of the right of the uh, of the round that's what i said so, no it isn't no you know you, you said something different uh and uh it's but it's when they hit the target and okay close together they all hit the target okay so they, that's uh, what i meant to say oh, 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 oh. yeah well, yeah. Everybody can define that. Okay. Right. That from the universe. Okay. Great. All right. Let me. I'm gonna get back to it. Okay. I didn't want to let that lie. Right. I thought so. All right. Yo. I'll talk to you later. Oh, I'm gonna call you on it. Okay. Yo. Bye. Uh huh. Yo. Bye bye. So, okay. My my dad like shot like expert with like a lot of weapons in like the military and he was in like NRA for a while and so he knows a lot about that shit. Shooting was that after the president was hit, yeah. 
They dragged him to the floor, but they then allowed him to stand back up. And one of the female agents mm -hmm. in front of him was clearly a lot shorter than Donald Trump. Yeah. And therefore, his whole sort of upper torso, including his head, was clearly visible to potentially other shooters who may have been uh, in the area, which nobody knew at the time. But that does not strike me as normal Secret Service protocol. Well, you know, they did a good job of putting the body barrier on it. But I will note, though, prior to actually having the president stand up, you hear one of the Secret Service officers ask, is shooters down, shooters down? Mm. So they at least were looking at the existing and, and the obvious threat as being mitigated. And so that that is kind of within protocol. Mm -hmm. I do understand your concern as well, which is mine, which is that there wasn't enough to actually body shield if you look at the height and the mm -hmm. size of President Trump with uh, someone else. This is why, and I don't mean this to be you know kind of hyper i agree like her that it's trying to be a rhetoric to try and spin things up but this is why when we look at the ideas of the dei the diversity equity inclusion it does put things at risk when you say we need a percentage of x right mm -hmm. because dei can mean die we we have to think about the fact that it should be about merit that was good that was that was good man Autocracy, and especially when you're talking about the protection of the president or other lives. Oh, well, man. it was very striking to me that last night that was when, totally practiced. Uh, it was at the RNC convention. It was a wild good applause. It was an amazing scene. He looked quite emotional, actually. But he was surrounded by a far bigger number of Secret Service agents, all of whom appeared to be very big, tall men. Well, I think that you see where the entire RNC, and, and especially here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, has really ramped up their security mm -hmm. protocols, and for obvious reasons. Uh, sometimes it is a bit of a knee-jerk where they overcompensate for a failure in the past, and I think that's what they've done in some cases here when it comes to the RNC. But certainly the Absolutely. president, he definitely needs this protection. I agree with you. There, there was a different look in the president, a, a look of unification, a look mm -hmm. not of fear but of defiance and of the fact that we have to understand he also saved his own life. He did exactly what he was trained to do, which is that when you take fire, even from a tactical perspective in the military or otherwise, you drop to the ground, you minimize your silhouette, and then you go ahead and look at where the actual target or what they call a reactor contact mm -hmm. drill is to mitigate the threat. What the president does in his actual hour, you know, or moments after the incident is truly remarkable. You know, I've, I've trained with people who the fight or flight reaction and individuals even being trained, they get stunned, they freeze, you know, in the event of getting hit or getting shot. Mm -hmm. The president didn't stand in fear, he stood in defiance. And he wanted to also let the American people know that he was okay by putting his fist in the air and saying, fight, fight, fight. He meant that not in a way to try and keep the temperature high, but fight for America, fight for our republic, fight for what is right. And I can tell you that we need to, in All the right, political world, the take speech. it down a notch and think about the fact that words matter. The things that we say is matter. We have to start thinking yeah. about the humanistic qualities of people and put political ideology okay. aside to realize that we're husbands, we're fathers, okay. that we're sons, we're brothers, we're daughters, we're mothers. Yeah. These things take okay. priority, but this type of negligence Bro, like, right, does on. warrant, in my opinion, not just an FBI investigation. It needs to come into the House. It needs to have a J-13 style commission, and we need to investigate and get all findings so we can put any type of co potential conspiracies or even any concerns aside that this was done anything other than negligence. Right. And, you know, the Secret Service director, Cheetle, was I interviewed last night and said this. Let's watch a clip. So when you saw the events unfold on Saturday. Shock uh, and then concern. This is an event that should have never happened. Who is most responsible for this happening? What I would say is that the Secret Service is responsible for the protection of the former president. So the buck stops with you? The buck stops with me. The president and Homeland Security Secretary said today they had 100 percent confidence in you. But there are some members of Congress calling on you to resign. Do you plan to stay on? Absolutely. I do plan to stay on. I feel like if the president almost gets killed and there's like because of a really big security breach, I think like. I think you should just like just go do something else. I mean, you've got to. You really messed up, man. Now, he's not the president. He's a president. You're still a president after you beca after you, you like end your term. Are you surprised she still got the job? You know, I'll be honest with you. The idea of saying Mia culpa 
or that responsibility is the same as accountability has been a problem within all elected positions and mm -hmm. appointments positions. I think that she should resign. I think that she should accept her failures. Leaders lead, and when they fail, they accept that failure, and they understand that it's time to step aside. But at minimum, if she refuses to step aside, when we do our actual investigations, and I hope we get a J-13 style commission, I just text Speaker Johnson just now and feel that my background and kind of unique experience mm -hmm. would be great to head this up. But I'm going to look at minimum, the home and rule, which will take her salary down to $1, and hopefully that will encourage her to leave because we need true leadership here. So we need to make sure that our president, President Biden, our vice president, Kamala Harris, our <laughs> former president, who's now our nominee, President Trump and, and Vice President Ven, uh, Pence, or sorry, Vance, will ensure that they're safe. It, this is not a political thing. This oh is about God. Americans being safe to be able to go ahead and serve our nation without fear. Jesus. Yeah. And also I'd add uh, RFK Jr., who was on my show only two weeks oh, ago, oh, man. Uh, bemoaning the fact that even though his name is Kennedy and both his, his father and his uncle were both assassinated That's for right, political yes. motivation, and, you know, it was so he was still not Trump allowed to have a Secret Service it. detail. He now, he now has. Let's take a look at what he told me, actually, and I'll yes. get your response. I'm the first candidate in history whose, whose request had Secret Service protection to been denied. I've had several credible threats on my life the, the Secret Service itself, we provided them 68 pages of detailed death threats and other threats against me. And they, they examined my case and they said that I was at a, uh, at a accelerated risk. The White House still has refused to give me protection. And it's only now that there was an assassination Jesus attempt Christ. on Donald Trump that he's finally, uh, that Biden has finally allowed him to have a Secret Service. I feel like detail. just listening to that guy makes me want to clear my throat. Detail, which seems to me shamefully too late. Pierce, it's shameful, it's unconscionable, the fact that an individual, just because mm -hmm. he doesn't sit within a Democrat party or Republican party, is any less deserving of his safety and protection, and especially a man who, as you pointed out, had his father and his uncle assassinated and killed, a man who has credible threats against his life from either side. The bottom line is, Pierce, is that this cannot be about partisan politics. No, uh, he beat the, bet the CIA gave him throat cancer. Do you have throat cancer? Really? I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's just like listening to him talk. It's just like, what the fuck, man? God damn. Holy fuck. I had no idea. Well, that makes a lot of sense then. Yeah, now I understand. I was wondering, like, why is his voice so fucked up? Okay, now I know. If this individual is running for presidency, if he can tangibly show Jesus. that he's at risk, why would you not allocate the necessary resources to keep this man safe? I feel bad, yeah. Congressman Corey Mills, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Pierce. Honored. Well, join me now as commentator and streamer Destiny, host oh. of the Dave Rubin Show. Dave Here Rubin, co-founder of the Young Turks, Cech Yuga, and the Outkick host, Charlie Arnold. Well, welcome to all of you. Um, Cech Yuga, we've spoken a lot about this presidential race for over the last year. Um, where are we now with this? Is it right to assume that, that two things have happened as a result of this attempted assassination? One is that Donald Trump has got exponentially more popular because people feel a real empathy with him for what happened. And secondly, that Joe Biden is more likely than not now to remain the Democrat nominee. Yeah. So there's no reason to unilaterally surrender to Donald Trump now, but that's what it looks like the Democrats are doing. Uh, so I hope that they uh, pick up the campaign to oust Biden again, because he's clearly not going to win. Mm -hmm. All the interviews are disasters. I don't want to surrender to Trump, but apparently Democratic officials are considering it, uh, which would be just keeping Biden in the race. That is a form of surrender uh, because they don't want to waste any of their so-called talent uh because they're so no. despondent about the race i think that's pathetic they should fight and if they have a new ticket they still have a perfectly good chance of beating donald trump now i, I do want to say though there's a second topic here your interview with corey mills representative mills there i i think it was dangerous and wrong so you guys said oh well you know we sh this shouldn't be a partisan thing and we should turn down the rhetoric and then you implied that maybe the secret service or the biden administration allowed the shooting to happen well no, that's nobody no, no, that's no, no, not I never said that he just said that there was a uh, oversight and there needs to be accountability for whose fault it was so they could figure out what it was i don't think he said that i didn't get that out of him who said that 
Ernie, no, nobody, no, nobody you implied definitely that. did. And you nobody definitely implied. did, Pierce. Right. Well, I certainly you, did. You kept talking about, oh, well, look, I'm not saying conspiracy theory, but hey, it's so easy to well, find. Well, just and why to didn't correct they you, Jake, you didn't, And you didn't Hang just on. say negligence. Hang on. I didn't. Cor and forget about you, Corey Mills. Right, okay. He didn't say, just oh, clear, hey, look, hey. I, okay. He said, maybe it's not just respond. malpractice. Maybe it's not just negligence. I didn't What does that mean? say that. Is a lunatic suggesting? Am I allowed to respond? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. First of all, I didn't say anything that you just said. Uh, secondly, he did raise the specter that there's something very <laughs> odd about us. And by the way, there is. I'm not a conspiracy theorist either. But the idea... Yeah, that the yeah, man, bro, like, it's... It's crazy. This random 20-year-old loser with apparently no social media just happens to get up on this building that's well within, like, the uh, range that's needed to be, uh, you know, controlled. And then people are even reporting this. Nothing happens about it. Yeah, you can't have all these coincidences and not expect people to try to put the dots together. And I'm not even saying, I don't think that's what happened. But, like, fuck, you got to admit that it seems a little bit suspicious. Holy shit! Pre the, the President Trump, who was recently the President of the United States right. and is very likely to be again, was shot at, from 150 meters by a kid with an AR-15 yes. who was seen by spectators nearly a minute before he unloaded eight bullets in the direction of Donald Trump. And there's He's another perspective with like an investigation is that an investigation can check to see if there was anything wrong but it can also prove that there was no wrongdoing. It was just a mistake. So, like, it, it does both effects. It's not like it's just one thing. It's both. Very, very strange. And if you don't mm -hmm. think it is, then I think you're being a little bit disingenuous. Now, True. what, is, okay, the nature, so what is the nature theorist. of that strangeness? We don't, we, we don't know what's happened here. Right, but no so, one can yet. No one can yet give a legitimate. Ex well, it, it is. I mean, like, is Biden a conspiracy theorist? If if they think that Biden was the one who was talking about doing an investigation, he said that. He already said it was going to happen. But by on that logic, Biden's a conspiracy theorist. What are we doing? Explanation as to why this could Here's possibly have happened. Pierce, if you say it's negligence, I'm with you. If you say it's malpractice, okay, I'm def I get it. 160 feet, why is he on the roof, et cetera? And, yeah. But, if, but you're clearly implying and, that it and, is. And also, that's why you do the investigation, because everybody can see that, and you want to make sure that nobody has that fucking opinion. Odd, as in not negligence. But something that was no, planned I don't, no, by I'm the not. government. That was no, a good one, I don't wasn't know. It? Hey, get out of here, man. What the hell? <laughs> Jesus Christ with these lunatic Republicans. Total lunatic Republicans. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me your lunatic conspiracy theory about how odd I don't it have was. any I don't have any lunatic conspiracy theories. Do you not think <laughs> it's odd, Cenk Yuga, that this kid it's, could I think this it's, kid it, could I think it's crazy stroll that they, across a, a roof unmanned and just fire off eight bullets at President Trump from 150 meters? Do you not find that odd? So it, I, I find it deeply troubling. I think that there should be an investigation to see. How they screwed this up. I think the fact that they didn't get there on the roof quicker is it speaks poorly of them. On the other hand, can we acknowledge that the Secret Service surrounded the president and would have taken a bullet for him? and would have died for him, but all they're getting now is c c odd conspiracy theories about how maybe... Actually, they, well, it's I not, mean, aren't you... Well, like, they well, wouldn't have needed to take the bullet if they had done the proper precautions. God, Pierce, you tell me. Aren't you implying that they let it happen? No. Aren't you implying that, no. obviously? What does odd no. mean? What does odd mean? No, Go I'll tell, tell you me what, what odd means. I'll, I'll tell you what odd means. Odd means that the Secret Service's primary function is to preserve the life of whoever is president of the United States, right? And they allowed mm -hmm. this roof to be unmanned. Allow. Allow. Well, they, you use the word allow. Okay. Some well, they did allow it, right? Is that not true? I mean, I don't know. I feel like they did. Yeah. Somebody made a decision not to have that roof patrolled, even yeah. though... As you we don't heard, even know that. Hang on. Somebody did because it wasn't patrolled. No, that's also not true. But it is, so look, it is uh, true. Peers, Piers, we don't know the last time they if looked at that. If that's not true and it's patrolled, that means that the cops let the guy on there and they let it happen.
So if he's right about it not being true, that makes it sound a lot worse. I don't know about this, guys. We don't know if they looked at it and then the guy crawled on. Here's afterwards. what we do now. Know. You mentioned, hold Here's on, what we do hold know. on. There was you, nobody you, on the roof from the Secret Service. Why? So you're telling me that you know that under Biden, Trump, and all the other presidents, that every roof had a Secret Service person on it can in every ever rally. Remember, you don't know can that. You, ever you don't know that. Can you ever remember a president or presidential candidate who was a president giving a speech at a public rally where a roof 150 metres from his head is unprotected by Secret Service? Can you name once How the hell ever would I that that's know happened? That? How the hell would you... Pierce, how the hell would you know that? You don't know anything. I am told so by... So if you say to me, hold I have on, been told hold on. To be fair, he kind of has a point. But I feel like this would be a very easy decision, right? Because they probably have a protocol for what the area is that you should look at. And you just see, well, was this in the protocol? It was. Okay, you didn't do it. Well, then you're wrong. It's really not that complicated. If you say to me... I've been told by... Ex I listen... I've been told by many experts in the last 36 experts, hours. Like that lunatic Republican you just had on, who's an expert. Actually, no. Talking about, I, oh, my God, oh, yeah, I'm not well, so... Oh, well, he no, was I, also... I don't think it's just okay. negligence. You, what, then what does that mean? Okay. Then you think it was allowed. Actually, you the congressman... Planned. Actually, Who planned it? Who planned it? Actually, the congressman that I spoke to was on the sniper... I think that he really downplays the value that, like, ensuring trust has... And I think a really good parallel to this is like COVID is that I think that the government and a lot of like authoritarian institutions expected to just use their authority and enforce it on everybody else and have people respect it. But that's not the way people's brains work. Like if a lot of people believe something, sometimes it's in your best interest to make sure that thing isn't true. Even if you know it isn't true, like, I, I don't really see the problem here. The protection detail for Joe Biden Ooh. when he was vice president. He probably mm -hmm. knows more about it than you do, with great respect. Okay. Unless you're about to tell me you are a covert sniper protector, are you? No, I'm telling you that we don't know anything about when they checked the building. We do know that there was the red haired well, we guy. We do. We know at least one time they didn't who talked to the BBC, he told the cops, then the cops showed up. It's not like they didn't show up. And so if you say, hey, we should investigate and find out when was the last time they did the perimeter right. check? When did they- You'll say Biden is live? Is that even true? This is just some other shit. This is something totally different. Yeah, it's not even about this. Get on that roof. I totally agree. If you say negligence, I totally agree. Yeah. If you say Trump was brave in that moment, I totally agree. But if you start implying, mm -hmm. which you definitely are, mm. and Corey Mills definitely is, that it was planned or that you it don't was... underestimate the incompetence in the government? No, I, I think it's probably true. Like, I don't think that it was a conspiracy. I, I, I don't. However, I think that enough people do, and it's so... so many stars aligned for things to happen that I think it's reasonable for people to have a level of distrust and I think that it's better for everybody if it's investigated to make sure that's not true. That's my perspective. So odd did it happen. You're saying it like the a a Epstein thing was odd. The Epstein thing was actually And by the odd. way, they both agree with each other about this. They both agree with me on this, too. They're arguing about semantics and just wasting time. So I'm... Yeah, it's yeah just a the video waste camera's out. That, that, is, that makes me think, yes, there was something mm. planned. Yeah, I'm brave enough to it. say that. Instead, you're implying it. Corey Mills is implying it. So just say it then. No, no. Don't tell, what does odd mean? I, okay, again, I will say to you, I am not saying anything was planned. It's, I'm not saying there was any inside job at the Secret policing. Service so to allow this to happen. I am simply saying... You're implying that. You get no, no, that, right? Here's Don't what you I'm get implying. That implying that? Here's what That's I'm what implying. That's what the viewer's going to think. Here's what I'm implying. There was such a catastrophically negligent failure here by the Secret Secret Service. I completely you can't expect people to think that that's real. Whenever things happen that are outside of the realm of possibility, people will expect that there's a reason for it. That's common sense. You could easily expect that. Yeah. What do you mean? Understand why so many people are utterly bemused that this could ever have been allowed to happen. The idea you have a perfect vantage point over Donald Trump from 150 meters mm -hmm. at a public rally, given how divisive and polarizing he is, given how 
vehemently some people hate him, and given the threats of violence he's had on many, many occasions, the idea that that roof remained unmanned by Secret Service is to me very bloody odd, Cenk. Yes. So you are implying that there is a chance that it was planned? No, I'm not. I'm implying the yes, there's a chance. Absolutely, there's a chance. 100% there's a chance. That chance is 1%, 0.1%, but it's there. And that's enough to do an investigation. Obviously. Like, that's the whole point. Yeah, it, it's extremely low. It's literally no, no, what you just said. Literally what I'm doing is implying that there's something we don't know about what's happened here, and we need some okay, answers. Then what would it be? We need some answers very... I have no idea. I don't know. Now, let me go to some no, of the 50%. other panelists. I don't we, care about we, the percent. I'm just saying it's, a lot of energy I don't this. think it's what happened. Uh, I think, Jake, you have to go, so I appreciate you... Uh, uh, well... I appreciate you calling me a conspiracy theorist. Thank you for joining me. Um, let me go to Dave no Rubin. Anytime. All right, thank you. Uh, let me go to Dave Rubin. Um, I mean, Dave Rubin, this, this is the problem. You, if you can't raise questions... Seriously. To be honest, I've watched the Young Turks on and off ever since, like, 2008. I've always liked him. I have. Even though he's an asshole, I've always liked him. I remember he was on MSNBC, I think, for a while, and then they kicked him off. Serious questions about Why? what... Because at the time, I think he was one of the only people that was giving a non-party like party answer to different things. He quit. Yeah, I, I know. What's happened here? Or suggest yeah, he wasn't mainstream. Odd, yeah. Uh, without being branded a, a conspiracy theorist by people like Cenk Hugo, there's a bit of a problem, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, this was, it seemed to me, not just negligence. There's something very strange about this whole... By the way, guys, there's a lot of people that I like. That doesn't mean I agree with everything they say. That's all. Yeah, I, I just, like, all right, all right, yeah. Incident and how it unfurled. I have never seen members of the public nearly a minute before a shooting a, a, at a president uh, raising the alarm and telling people the guy's on the roof. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, well, Piers, I haven't been on camera with that guy in about eight years, but I'm just reminded of the brain piercing, serious headache you get listening to him. Uh, you just laid out very calm and cogent questions as to what happened oh, he's talking about, yeah. to the man who is the ex-president and could be yeah. future president of the United States. There was either a catastrophic mm -hmm. failure, which we're all acknowledging, or something more nefarious. All we can do is ask questions. The, the red-headed guy with the visor who was interviewed on the BBC saying that it was probably about two minutes, and we'll find out the exact details on that, about two minutes before where he was warning law enforcement that there was someone on the roof. Well, in two minutes, Piers, right now, I have an IFB in my ear. I have a microphone right here. That's what all of the agents around there have. And they're all connected to a network of people who are telling them where to look and, and what of to course. do. I'm not an ex... Of of course, and I'm not an expert yeah, in this. I feel like you could probably relay that information in like 30 seconds. Yeah, he, no, he's right. He's very right about this. He is. Yeah, true. But we all know this. Corey Mills happens to be an expert, and your interview was quite good yeah. with him. So the idea that two minutes went by and mm -hmm. nobody looked at the roof, and by the way, the, the Secret Service director is now saying the reason they didn't have anyone staged on that roof was because there was a slope yeah, on the roof, nonsense. and they didn't want one of their agents to get hurt. I mean, I've got roofers out on my, on my roof right now. There's mm -hmm. a little bit of a slope. They have special shoes. They make it work. The whole thing is, is insane, but I, I would say at the political level... The slope? This has re-energized not just the Trump base, which was energized, but this new wide swath of disaffected liberals and UFC fighters. I mean, I just, okay. I, and NFL players and just good, decent Americans to realize that Donald Trump is not the enemy right now. And this, this fake call for unity. Yes, I would like unity in a land of unicorns and everything else. But you can't on one day be or spend yeah. four years basically calling the guy uh, Hitler and his supporters Nazi. Then he gets shots and now we should have unity is, is just nonsense. I'm well, sorry. And also for the current president of the United States to be asked, you know, do you do you have any soul searching about the language you've used, given that days Well, he's not going to take accountability for it, realistically. It'd make him look bad if he did. Like, I would do the same thing if I was him. I would just probably try to answer it with less fuck arounds, you know? The shooting. Less meandering. He had told donors that it was time to put Trump it. in the bullseye. And then he, he tries to 
dance his way out of this by claiming... I didn't say crosshairs. I don't know about that. Because if somehow, when you talk about human beings, bullseye or crosshairs mean any difference. Uh, obviously, he didn't mean, I think, Donald Trump should be shot. But obviously, if you're a deranged long, young lunatic with an impressionable mind, who the hell knows what that kind of language... We don't know yet. Right, yeah. about any of the well, motivation. Apparently, there's a kind of very, very strange, again, a very strange lack of information that they've been able to find out about this young shooter. Pierce, of course, but you also have to understand that there has been an entire media machine, mainstream media machine and Democrat elite that for years, since before Donald Trump was president, have been calling him Hitler and his supporters Nazis. What? That's true, but they do the same thing. Like, I, this, is, this has been going on with everybody. Like, everybody's been doing this. Like, I, I don't really think this is, like, a unique thing. Like, yeah, it's super, super common. Would someone do if they truly believe that? I'm not directly linking this to Biden's bullseye also, so, comment, yeah. as irresponsible as it may be, or anyone else's specific comment. But and over I, I, will, I will grant people, I will grant you, I think that the Democrats do it with less pushback. So it, it, it's, not like, it's not like it's 50-50. But it's not 100 zero either. Time in culture, if things get normalized, and yes, this man is going to put us in camps, and you can turn on MSNBC on any given day, and they're talking about how they're all going to be arrested and taken off the air, and what he's going to do to minorities and gays and everything else, all utter yeah. complete nonsense. At some point, people might get a subtle message and then do something crazy. Again, we don't know if that was well, what happened right I think, now, but we certainly can ask okay, about it. And I look, I think to be completely fair, I believe Donald Trump has spouted a lot of very uh, ill-advised and occasionally very dangerous rhetoric. Yeah, and I want has. both sides to dial it down. Because 100%. actually where this leads to is where it's led to. And in Britain, we've had two members of parliament in the last 10 years yeah. murdered by people for political reasons, you know, basically because, you know, lunatics have wanted to eliminate them. Uh, let me bring in Destiny, because uh, oh, you've been here at the we center, go. as you here know, we go. of a, a massive All right. uh, online yeah. response to what you were uh -oh. saying. Uh, and I want to go through what you said, and I want to talk to you about this in a, in a hopefully in a, in a calm manner to try and understand what you were thinking. So on Saturday evening, hours after the shooting, you said, let me clarify, when I say conflicted, what I mean is I lean towards seeing it as a natural extension of the thing Trump and the MAGA kids support. So I don't think I have much sympathy about the attempt enough to chastise people celebrating it. You, you couldn't find it uh, in your heart to chastise people for celebrating the near assassination of, the, of a, a man who was president of the United States and maybe again? Absolutely not. Conservatives have completely bled that well dry. And the idea that they, after engaging in the most divisive and most extreme rhetoric that this country has seen in recent history, that they would come on and, and beg for sympathy, that it's escalated in some kind of violent confrontation is absolutely insane. Even the idea right now of saying, well, if you call somebody a Nazi for so long, it's, you know, what do you expect people to do? I grew up listening to Rush Limbaugh call Obama a communist every single day he was on the radio. Um, you've got conservatives that talk about how the mRNA vaccine were ways to sneak microchips into us. You've got yep. COVID lockdowns that were done because the government was trying to take all your freedom away. They won't acknowledge anything that happened on January 6th. Um, they say that the election was stolen and that your country is being taken from you. Like, I don't think anybody should be killed. I don't think anybody should go out and kill anybody. But when you engage in this type of rhetoric and when you turn the temperature up over and over and over and over again, there is absolutely no room for but you, you to say, be shocked okay, or but you say, okay. the... He's right. He's right. I don't think that they've done it only but like all of those examples are examples and those are all legitimate. I remember whenever that happened. Certainly is there for you to ask yeah. for sympathy. But you say, you but Destiny. The, the rest of this, this is gonna be so stupid because this is about like, how do you feel about something? It's like such a stupid, like virtue signal conversation. It's super stupid. I can already tell you what's gonna happen. Like, you I, say you I, don't I, want anybody killed. Yeah. And yet you say, I don't think I have much sympathy about the attempt Who cares? to chastise people celebrating it. This People is like celebrating oh. the near assassination of Donald Trump. If you can't find it in you to chastise people who do that, aren't you just as despicable as the people you've just spent the last two minutes haranguing? No, because they've yes, led the is. way. This is the environment that they've created. So you just, I, so you think behaving like the people- I disagree with that. I don't think that, uh, I don't think conservatives are like, they've created this. I think this has just happened on its own. 
I don't think anybody really created it. It's just like it's a sense of mutual escalation that's happened over time. Well, you think it's yeah, no, no, right? And it's like the the you know the right wing people say the left wing people started it. The left wing people say the right wing people started it. How, where do you where where was the beginning? Is there actually a point that you can point to and say this is where it started? Because I don't think that there really is. Twenty sixteen. No, I, I think there was bad stuff before that. That's what, like, Destiny was talking about that happening, and, and like, Obama, that was, like, 2007, 2008, 2009. Yeah, that was a long, long time ago. Despicable. The Civil War. Is the correct yeah. course of action. It's not about behave, behaving like the people who are despicable would be leading that type of letter, would be leading that type of rhetoric. It would be denying every single You're bad thing. How many times as a liberal, they do, how though. many times, how many times as a liberal have you been on a show, not you in general, but like a liberal been on a show and you've been forced to disavow all of the BLM riots, disavow all of the violence and blah, blah, blah. And then you talk to yeah. conservatives about Disavowing it. Disavowing violence, that was that's good. Flag. Yeah. January 6th. Oh, like conservatives disavow January 6th? Wait, wait, wait. First off, there's an. I feel like there's a lot of people that get pushed to disavow January 6th. Uh, Charlottesville was another one. I do think that it's like it's very common that people. Like people get held accountable for things that they didn't do. Like it, it, it's really not a one. It's not a one sided thing. Entire cultural machine <laughs> that has lied. That, there there is, is an that entire was it. We just cultural. Real time. That's it. What? That's why. That's so why what? conservatives deserve absolutely zero sympathy for anything that happens as a result of their rhetoric. That's it. It's so. It's so easy. Like okay, it's but, so simple. Okay, but I'm destiny. not exactly sure what he's talking about. But I would say this is the type of person that the internet has broke their brain, thus leaving them with very little empathy for their co-human. I mean, a good, decent father uh, is now dead because of this. He's had his brains blown out because he was defending his wife and daughter. I would hope that you have a little. Empathy well, for actually, that. I, I can. Well, I can. I can that. Well, let me yeah. jump. Let me jump in there because we have a clip of what Destiny has said about that. Oh, very here we thing. go. Let's listen to this. Fuck it. Fuck the dude. Um, the firefighter guy. Uh, fuck Trump. Fuck the people that support him. I just want you to know, okay? Just in case you're confused or it seems like I'm, uh, you don't whatever. If one of you were in the crowd and you're a conservative fan of mine and you end up, you know, getting blown away, or whatever the fuck, I'm making fun of you the next day on Twitter. I am 100. <laughs> percent I mean, I, I gotta say, I just found that repulsive, Destiny. Yeah, the, the, I, I wish that you. Yeah, he, Destiny's an asshole. Is this really like? Are we having like a panel to determine that Destiny's an asshole? I could have told you that. It wouldn't have taken me an hour. Yeah, I, I, I could have. Yeah. I, there is no room. There is no room for the hand wringing, and I will ne I will not participate in this anymore. Oh, it's anymore. not hand wringing. The hand wringing. No, it's not no, hand it absolutely is. No, it's I, just that you just you are positioning you yourself. So well. Am you, I you, the only person that thinks that this entire conversation is ridiculous? It's perform. It's performative. Yeah, that that's the word. I really like that word. It's performative. When you no, are saying, cares about this. You. conservatives can say anything. No, I'm not a they can have any conspiracy theory. They can have any plot. They can do any of these things. And then, and then liberals are supposed right, to say, and be like, Destiny, oh my no. God, it's so tragic. No, Destiny, Absolutely not. Let me explain, Absolutely. Let me explain my position because I'm not a conservative. I'm not. I feel like I'm a not. lot of conservative conspiracies are pretty widely criticized, whether it's like the January 6th thing, uh, the election. Uh, like, I feel like a lot of conservative conspiracies are criticized, and, and so are like liberal conspiracies. Like, it's just they're criticized from the other side. The Pizzagate. Uh, Pizzagate's not really conservative. QAnon. Yeah, think about QAnon. Yeah. On either side in your race, right? Here's what I think about what you did. You'd like to mm -hmm. fire off, as you've done so far in this debate, about your fury at how disgusting Republicans are, how inhumane they are, how they never have any empathy, blah, 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 blah. And then Name a liberal conspiracy? Uh, the Russia... Uh, causing Trump to win in 2016. I think that that, uh, that has been criticized massively by conservatives. And a lot of people were like getting mad about that. Yeah, that's like the first example I could think of. Uh, let, me, let me just think about it for a minute. It was proven false. It doesn't matter. You yourself actually are exactly that's big the, one. the person that you're describing. You are in oh, The BLM riots. That's another good one. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, like the BLM riots and all of that. Uh, I feel like conservatives criticize that a lot. You are somebody who seems almost gleeful mm -hmm. that a young firefighter with a family, with a wife and children, who he was protecting as he was shot dead, that he deserved what was coming to him because he went to a President Trump rally 
a man who was president of the United States until recently for four years and maybe again. You sound almost That's conspiracy theory. Uh, yeah. So like part of it, I, I'm using that as a term. So like what I mean by that is that there is an assertion that the reason why, uh, like basically like police had like open season on like shooting black people and minorities. And that assertion was criticized heavily by conservatives. Absolutely. It was, it's not even a question. What are we even talking about? People are pushing back on that super hard. Who claimed that? A lot of people. What are you talking about? Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised I'm getting any pushback on this. Lethal, Destin, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That makes you, frankly, despicable. Yeah. I don't think I'm gleeful about anything. I you don't are. think anybody should die. I don't think anybody deserves to die. But you want to talk about gleeful? Look at the conservative response to Pelosi's husband no, no. when they broke in. I can there answer are that. Mainstream media figures I can answer that. that. Were, I don't care. I can answer that. With all I, respect, think... I don't care what your Let answer is. Let me answer is. that. The reality is, is that conservatives have been turning the temperature up on the rhetoric. They have been making fun. As of I said, I think everybody has. You must have been heavily liberal at the time. People are really getting in their feelings about the fact that I said that. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, it 100% happened. Uh, people created a narrative that, like, basically the police were going out there and shooting people, and there was no line of, like, accountability for it at all. And a lot of conservatives pushed back on this, and they said the police were doing the right thing. Like, that's where the whole, like, uh, ACAB thing, uh, defund the police, all that stuff came from. Like, that was all a conspiracy. That's bullshit. Like, you need the police. You can't disband the police. It's retarded. I I I'm, I'm astonished that... I had a single person who was questioning this. This was a, a, this was a exactly a liberal conspiracy. It's bullshit. It's proven wrong. It's proven wrong. Ever and by the way, how is it proven wrong? Because every single time those people have problems, they're calling the fucking police. Of these types of events for years. I think ACAP started from BLM. Uh, it massively popularized it, and defunding the police and the call for that was massively popularized after that. After George Floyd, absolutely. Yeah, it took it from like a, a one or a two and it dialed it up to 11. Absolutely. And now when something happens to them, now they're, they're looking for for uh, for sympathy from mm -hmm. the liberal side. Absolutely not. It's insane. Right. It's unhinged. Yeah, that you can conduct problem. yourself in such a manner and but expect people problem. to feel sorry when things happen. Yeah. Why should why should anybody on the right listen to a word of your hectoring and lecturing about how they should behave. And by the way, for the record, the mockery of Nancy Pelosi's husband when he was attacked by an intruder with a hammer was also despicable, right? I, I can see despicable yeah, behavior all on all sides, sure. and I'm happy to call it out when I see it. You, however, want to present yourself as this great yeah. kind of standard bearer of decency who sees outrageous behavior on the right time and again and is incensed by this disgusting, inhumane behavior. And yet time sorry, no, and no, again, no. I, since the attempted assassination I, of Donald Trump, you have displayed exactly the same kind of inhumane behavior. Fuck him about a, a fireman who is who is killed because he attends a rally of a guy yeah, he wants to vote with, for. My issue with the my issue with the MAGA kids is not that they are not empathetic. My issue is that they support a president that led an insurrection against the United States. I'm not here to tone police over their empathy. 80 I'm million just people that voted for, for Donald empathy, Trump last time around. Saying, that's great. 80 million people voted for a guy that tried to insurrect the government, mm -hmm. and it looks like they might try to do it again. I mean, like I don't know what you want me to say. That's these are the facts on the ground. Um, the idea that so these you don't like you don't like attacks on you don't like attacks on democracy. So presumably you would unreserved condemn the attempted assassination of Donald Trump because that's one of the most egregious I think attacks he did on American it, right? democracy of modern times. Presumably, I don't think that you will take this opportunity, to... given you I, I are so anybody... determined to protect the integrity of democracy, you would find it absolutely outrageous that someone has tried to assassinate a president, right? If if the other conservatives on this show want to say that it was absolutely outrageous no, that Donald you. Trump attempted to coup the government, I'm asking then, you. then maybe then I would. Yeah, no, I'm not going to get on my knees and and, and beg for uh, forgiveness or or show sympathy. I'm asking to you to, I'm asking for that. Yeah, I'm this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, where I think like the real crux of why Destiny is pushing this really hard is because I think that he is he is doing it under a focus of like matching energy rather than. Uh, like, it, it's not really a, a principle thing. And, like, if there is a principle, the principle is, why should I concede ground when they won't? I think that's basically where it's coming from. Because I think that he would agree that it's a bad idea to try to kill the president, right? Probably not a good idea to do that. And it's, like, not good for everybody. But I think that that's really why. And I, 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 I find this to be, again, I think this is a very silly conversation.
asking you to condemn what happened yeah. as an egregious attack on, on democracy. Can you do that? No, I won't. No, I won't. I won't. You can't do that. that. You see, not so not why the hell, absolutely frankly, not. Destiny, absolutely not. why that the hell not. should we absolutely listen to a not. word you have to say Wait, about... Hold on. Why do you think conservatives haven't been listening to a word that liberals have said about anything for eight years? Right, what do you think why is going to change? They? You think but that liberals point, come out Destiny. now and they go, oh my God, this was so horrible. Here's my point. Wow, that is true. Charlie, I'll bring you in at the end of this. I promise you. I feel bad for this girl, bro. Like, they just put her on and it's like, yeah, just just keep smiling, sweetie. It's okay. No, no, we'll get you in for the last two minutes. A good chance. It's been 36 response. minutes. Here's my problem, Destiny, with your whole position on this, right? Is that you Jesus. don't actually have anything inside you that you want the other side to have. You don't have any of the empathy. You don't have any yes. sympathy. You don't care that someone tried to assassinate I'm Donald Trump. You don't care that a young fireman you with a family was I'm killed in the process. That. You don't Just actually. Don't put it in you are not the person you want these other other people to be. And all you do is play what a battery with every question I give you. And I'm just stopping. Well, what about it? We're talking about Donald Trump. We're talking about the temperature of this country. But here's a question for the two panelists. What percentage of this event happening was due to Donald Trump's rhetoric? What do they think the answer to that question is? What percentage could it be? That Not zero. I'll tell you that. I mean, it's impossible to say. Is it 30 percent, 50 percent? How do you quantify that? But I'll tell you one thing. It's not zero. I think anybody would say if you say it's zero percent, you're a fucking bro. Like you, <laughs> you you've crossed over into another realm. The, the other side, Very as we've just heard from Dave Rubin, has spent eight years calling Donald Trump the new yeah. Adolf Hitler, a person who was responsible for the murder of 12 million people, including 6 million Jewish people, in a Holocaust. Last time I checked, Donald Trump hasn't murdered 12 million people. So much as you would like him to be the new Hitler, he's not. But again, to an <laughs> yeah, impressionable yet. young deranged mind who has easy access to I knew that was going to come guns, I knew that was going to happen. That can be easily interpreted as an existential threat, said President Biden. Somebody that needs to be put in the bullseye, said Biden. Okay, Only I'm last curious. week. And guess what? Guess what? Somebody then comes forward device, and tries to kill the existential threat. Rhetoric? Who is engaged in more divisive rhetoric over the eight years? If you had to guess, if you had to assign a rough percentage, again you're Democrats playing what about three? Again you're deflecting. It's, just as not, it's not what just as Joe all Biden, the just as Joe all Biden the did last night, temperature. just as Joe Biden did with Lester Holt on NBC last night. Every time he was asked, "Have you done any soul searching about your own rhetoric, your own ill-advised use of language?" He deflected it back to attacks on Trump, and you're doing exactly the same thing with Republicans. And I will do you the say, exact same you thing. Say Republicans you say Republicans are. You want, you want this is so stupid. Everybody's doing it. Everybody acknowledges that everybody's doing it. But they're fighting about, like, who's doing it more. That really depends on who you ask. Like, you're not, like, there's no way that you can come to a consensus on that. It, it, it's impossible. Like, it, what you you can't like i mean i'm just being realistic like you you really can't it's pretty easy yeah and i'm sure somebody who has the different outcome that you do thinks the same thing this is a this is a conversation that will never end say that this they is are our lacking in comment when yeah, but... donald trump was saying second amendment people could maybe do something about mm. hillary clinton like no it's absolutely deranged the mm. double standard that. that's being asked here is insane and you heard both Sounds of them say really earlier bad. how much did donald trump's rhetoric contribute to the current environment oh not much at all <laughs> like no yeah i'm not gonna say anything to these people of course not you see, well, Destiny, I, I, I'm unversed in any of the current events that have happened over the last couple of years. First off, politics is downstream from culture, right? And what has happened to our culture in the last eight years? What has happened to our culture is that the mainstream media has lied about everything, always to the detriment of right-leaning people, whether it is the Russia hoax or COVID or Brett Kavanaugh's a serial rapist or the Covington kids are racist or Jesse Smollett was hoax, uh, was, was lynched or whether it was very fine people on both sides. Every single lie always goes against right-leaning people. So they are slightly annoyed and distrustful of people. And, and the thing is like, he's right about all of those examples. He is, he's right. This is why this argument will never, th there will never be a conclusion to this because both sides are wrong. It's obvious that they're wrong. I don't, I, it's, it's amazing to me that this conversation is still going on. Like they're both really bad. Like how are we like this? It's crazy. That's the point. I, I know. I'm just saying like, it's just, it's so dumb. Like you and other people in mainstream media. Both who sides lie are wrong. Brave take. 
people always talk to me about and they say that like my opinion on it is that uh you know i i like to take a middle of the road stance on things and i'm like a fence sitter um let me tell you something if you stand in the middle of the road you get hit coming both ways there are people who think that i'm a nazi and also people who think that i'm like a jewish operative and i think if i have both sides of those people mad at me i'm probably pretty normal no i i, I think this is actually what's happened a hundred percent about literally everything so perhaps literally everything empathy, like bio labs and nazis in ukraine or like mrna vaccines oh, that are causing 20 percent excess deaths <laughs> there it is yeah or the fact that covid uh, lockdowns of were course go there's nazis in ukraine like there's nazis in the u.s there's nazis everywhere there's nazis in germany still like that doesn't mean like, what does that have to do with ukraine as a country that's not the point yeah what uh, forever it was just an authoritarian abuse of power do you remember what i was saying before about how like culture nowadays teaches you not to critically think because if you critically think about things you run into problems whenever you critically evaluate the dogma of your own side i think that you're seeing a lot of the examples of that here like this is exactly what i was talking about like this entire thing this is why people don't critically think anymore it's because if you critically think, you end up running up against your own side, and they will not forgive you for it. Look at what happened with Destiny, for example. You can disagree with a lot of things that Destiny has said, but I've found it to be quite odd that Destiny has been uh, effectively repudiated by a lot of the left-wing community because he did question a lot of those things. And you know who else questioned a lot of those things and got kicked off? The other guy earlier, uh, Jink Uger from uh, the Young Turks. Now, he quit, right? But he quit after they sat him down and told him, you have to give the mainstream opinion for things. This is very common. What did he question? Uh, Destiny, for example, was Kyle Rittenhouse and uh, being negative about the rioters. And with Jink Uger, I don't, I, it, was, it was in like 2008. So like, I, I really don't remember. I just remember hearing him talk about it. Or, yeah, of course. Like, come on, dude. Conservatives yeah. are right. masters of misinformation, and it's happening right here. All right, let me bring in. Let me bring in. Yeah. Well, let me bring I mean, in. Char let me bring I in Charlie. You've been waiting very patiently. It's been Charlie, 40 thank minutes. you for being Please. so patient. Things have obviously got quite heated quite quickly. Uh, let me give you your chance now to have your say after what you've been hearing from from Destiny. Yeah. Well, first, one of my mods brings up a good point, and he says that um, there's a point where things cross the line. I think Destiny's crossed the line. What I think happens is that we have a self-radicalizing culture and what ends what what will go on is like somebody will say something that's like kind of normal and then they'll get hate for it and then they'll just get more and more and more extreme because their normal positions in their mind get uh, alienate them. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, Nick Merckx is an example of this. Nick Merckx was always pretty quiet about politics. And then he said one time he didn't want like, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like LGBT stuff in like elementary schools and in schools. And people treated that like he wanted to kill LGBT people. And I think that radicalized him. So it's like as soon as you push people away, they go even farther than when you push them. And I think that's what happens. And I think that happened with Destiny too in some cases. And that's again. And why is that? going against the established dogma thinking thinking for yourself first of all destiny represents to me a mm -hmm. certain subsect of the left i won't call it everybody who likes to bully Is he radical uh you've spammed that five times that's enough yeah that's just enough i i don't if, if you can't understand what the Overton window of culture is and be able to, like, contextualize what he's saying inside of that window, then that's not my problem. That's your problem. 
others into saying exactly what they want to hear. And if they don't say it, then you all of a sudden are the problem. Mm -hmm. And and they just they handle it exactly like he's been handling it on the show. It's like it's like a child throwing a temper tantrum. You can't get a word in edgewise. They just kick and scream and yell until you ultimately say, I've had enough. Just say what you want to say and back down. And that's exactly what we see a lot of times from people on the left. And it just it infuriates me because just like we saw on Saturday with the near assassination of Donald Trump, which that is exactly what it was. It was an assassination attempt, yet we have Dave, like you mentioned, all of the mainstream media putting out egregious headlines such as from CNN, Trump removed from stage by Secret Service after loud noises startles former president and crowd, which completely misspells what actually happened. Accurate. Here it is. This is the conservative, this is the game it right is, now. It's it is not right accurate. In front of us. Lies right now. You know Fox News. Listen, right? same listen. Type of first headline, of all, right? we are oh, we are allowed. We are headline, allowed right? in this country to ask questions. There was a lot of things that were very off on Saturday. And other from the way that the Secret Service handled. So you know, I love this country. God bless. I guess. Yeah. You can it, see. see. I, I agree that like I, I think Destiny brings up a good point that they were just reporting on it as being breaking news, but. I, I'm the kind of person, to be honest with you, I don't trust the media at all. And if there is a case where I think the media can downplay something that's inconvenient for them, I think they will. And like my perspective with the media is I start with your lying and I prove to myself that you're telling the truth. And I found it to be very odd that everybody knew it was a gunshot except for the news stations. He walks up with, a he gets up with a bloody ear. Like, how do we not know what's going on here? Like, how does this happen? And, and I understand, hey, look, I get it, right? I get it. it. It's breaking news. It's being developed in a certain time. But based off of the media misrepresenting many other things, yeah, my default is that I bet they're misrepresenting this too. That's my perspective. Absolutely. See, there you go. He, he immediately yeah, resorts know, yeah. to the yeah, yeah, here we go. And that the is exactly the childish demeanor is that oh, I'm let me, speaking let me jump about. In. On Saturday, don't talk, on Saturday, don't talk over, there don't talk over each other. Let oh, me just ask you this, Destiny. You, you were asked on that clip we played earlier if you'd have the same attitude if it was your parents who'd been killed at a Trump rally. And you replied, it's less end-of-life costs for me. Would I lose sleep over it? No. Do you understand how grotesque that sounds? It, do, it sounds grotesque, but the environment that we're in right now is grotesque. Why do you, you want to sound grotesque? I don't understand. You cannot engage in behavior that leads us to this point, that brings us to the precipice, and then say, wait a second, wait, are, are you taking this That's a little bit too far? So like, just to be clear, exactly, hang on, hang on, Dave, hang on, Dave. Hang on, Dave. Exactly just, to, hang on just to be because clear. Because of what conservatives have said. Just to be clear, Destiny, years, if, it was, yeah. if it was close members of your family or close friends who had gone to that Donald Trump rally and who'd lost their lives, one did and two are critically ill, uh, wounded, if they had died there, you would lose no sleep over that. Is that your position? No, of course, of course, I would be sad. It would be tragic, of course. And the closer they are to you, the more sad it would be. The same way that if a, if you had a child that you know tried to rob a store and the child got killed by the police, that would also be tragic and so sad. So you wouldn't think, but I mean, like, you wouldn't like, think fuck the them day, because they're your family. Then you'd have a different rule <laughs> for your own loved ones. Obviously, this is this is the problem. This is why I hate these moralizing arguments. They're so fucking stupid. Oh God, I hate them so much, bro. Like I hate them. They're so, I. Oh God. What I feel more upset yeah. if a person very close to me died rather than a person mm. farther away from me died. Yeah, I think the answer there is yes. Yeah, but you weren't just not. You weren't just, uh, just to be clear, you weren't just not upset by the death. I of I think that this is an example of like you know the the. There's an old quote. It says, uh, "If you gaze into the abyss long enough, it'll gaze back into you." I think that if you have these arguments and like these fights with people in chat all the time, it's going to be very easy for people to catch clips of you saying things that are like extreme or like uh, evil or something like that. And I think a lot of times like people will just be in a bad mood and say something like I know that I've done that many times myself where it's like not really true, but you're just saying something as like a frame of reference to like try to like prove what you're saying. Uh, not that it makes it okay, but it's just like that's where I think it comes from. So yeah. I think that's kind I of what's happened. 
who had given great service as a firefighter to his country, you were gleeful and you said, fuck him. Mm -hmm. Fuck him. I'm not. I'm right? not. It's would not you about say being fuck it's them if it was your that, family and friends? It's because it was it's, a Trump I supporter. Say, I would say that if they if they go to a rally like this and they support an insurrection as president and something happens to them, I would feel sad on a personal level because they're my parents. But See, again, I learned from them more than anyone else. I grew up in Nebraska. You learn that if you mess around and if you do dumb stuff, that there are going to be consequences. And would you think? And would you think? All right. And would you? And would you be happy to his, say, you know what? Fuck rhetoric. them. About your own His parents. rhetoric is far more dangerous than I've ever heard anything that Donald Trump said. What he's saying, I, I, I do actually think Destiny's wrong about this. That it should that it's a. I, I think equating robbing a store being a consequence of bad behavior to going to a rally and getting killed, I think that's kind of like not really accurate, because like one of them is you're breaking the law, and the other one is you're exercising your rights. I, I think that you should normally be able to expect. Like, you should be able to exercise your rights to do things without worrying about getting killed, right? I mean, it's not really a question. Like, like uh, doing something while committing a crime versus not is a very different thing. Right there. Yeah. He is saying you should have no empathy or sympathy for your fellow human. You I know, agree. we can all disagree. Mm -hmm. We can disagree about politics, of course. We And we no, can even we disagree, disagree about, about how the media politics. frames things and this everything is the else. Illusion. But this he's is basically the saying show up, the show up to a rally and, and get killed. And that is that is absolutely psychotic. I'm sorry. And, you know, the other part of this that's strange when people are calling for unity right now is if this had happened to Joe Biden, if Joe Biden mm -hmm. had been shot at and had part of his ear blown off, the very people calling for unity right now would be calling for the rest of us to be put in jail. So yeah. there's a strange asymmetry there as well. And I would but, ask but this. I would strange ask this. The strange asymmetry was Biden trying to make a phone call to the uh, to the wife of the killed mm -hmm. firefighter. And and, and her rejecting the call and Donald Trump not even reaching out, okay? That's the asymmetry. When you talk about it's just politics, this is the cancerous she brain rot that conservatives have no. fooled everybody into thinking. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's not just wow. politics to think that vaccines will kill you, okay? I've got three dead family members from COVID. My mom won't get a vaccine, okay? After both of them I'm were in the military, these guys went God. up and down. I'm not they, vaccinated, I, I, thank I, God. I, I, not, don't worry, we can all tell. We can all thank tell. God. My parents went up and down a line <laughs> when they did basic training for the Air Force. They got 20, 30 <laughs> vaccines each. My dad has a vaccine injury in his shoulder. And the idea of not getting vaccinated was unconscionable to them until the conservatives spread these messages that are just politics. Let me ask you this, Destiny. Let me ask you this, Destiny. When a science has real. shown that the you vaccine the actually was, was one real. of the worst things the you could have done for yourself, thank God I didn't get vaccinated. I thank God every single day I didn't let's, get vaccinated. Let's not get. I don't want to get. No, I don't want to read. I don't want to get back into COVID. I don't want to get back into COVID. Right? Hang on, hang on, Charlie. But here's the thing. I don't want to get down into COVID again. I want to stick to this story, and I want to ask you, Destiny, about Elon Musk who is uh, responded to one ex-user who was calling for him to demonetize you on the X platform and he said, you're right, this is not appropriate content for advertisers because of the offensive tweets you were aiming at Trump supporters. What is your response to Elon Musk? The same response as it always has been. Elon Musk is a thinly veiled, uh, I would say, like anti woke, anti SJW, basically right wing supported guy. And if you say things that they don't like, of course they'll demonetize you, they'll cancel you. Uh, conservatives are some of the least principled people in the universe when it comes to freedom of speech. As soon as they have. I think that there's a. I, I don't think that there's like really. It's not one or the other. I don't think any of them have any principles. I think that they just view it as I hate cancel culture unless I'm doing it. That's it. It's that simple. And I think, by the way, this is the case with like 95% of all issues. Nobody has any principle on it, period. They don't really care. They only care about being able to use it for their own gain. Have any power to demonetize or spam report somebody's, yeah. uh, you know, sponsors or anything like that? Of course, conservatives will jump onto it. Yeah, my account course. also was demonetized. I think in like twelve hours. Thank you very much, Elon Musk. Uh, although I do notice that my docs has been floating around Twitter for two days now, and tons of accounts that I've been reporting that haven't been banned yet. But I'm glad we've got our priorities straight there. Uh, again, here's what I think we're all struck by: your position seems to be that that anyone see you people say hypocrites. You only say hypocrites because you assume that this is a principle. It was never a principle. Saying that it was a principle was only convenient. It was always about power. From Donald Trump to his supporters, who represents their thinking, their ideology, their political views, that if they are killed, 
by an assassin mm -hmm. at, a, at a rally, then they deserve what's coming to them. And in your words, fuck them. I mean, do you not understand that to most decent Americans and to decent people around the world, that is incredibly offensive and makes you look like a two-faced hypocrite, somebody who wants the other First side all, to behave not, to a certain no, level I don't, of decency, I don't, I don't want but he's himself the, incapable no. of displaying it. I'm not, the conservatives don't have it in them to have that level of decency. So why don't, don't you rise to a higher bar? That. Why I, don't you not, yourself show doesn't, them? Doesn't, show them the promised land destiny. Work. Show them the way the they should be behaving. Have been doing it for eight years. There's nothing to be gained there. So right. instead, I think that destiny is right about this. By the way, you should never show somebody sympathy they wouldn't show you. That's the like. If you do that, they'll just take advantage of you. We'll just have a laugh instead. The the when you're have asking a laugh for this about type of decency, you're saying. When you, yeah, like they did for Pelosi's husband, like they did he for BLM die. people, like they did for the he didn't endless, die. for the endless, he didn't die, but he got the crap beat out of him with a hammer. And they no, made, and people can get mad about what I'm saying. You you can get mad about what I'm saying, but I think this is a more effective way to get power. You can say this, it's morally wrong, but I think that using the same things against people that they use against you, no matter what, is more effective and a stronger method of getting power and maintaining power. Absolutely. He jokes about his yeah, and by the way, lover, the, jokes okay? were dis the jokes were disgusting. Why yeah. can't you say that the same thing about the people mm -hmm. making mockery of Trump? Why do you join the mob? Why do it's you not just because it's not just the jokes. It's the underlying substantive analysis as well. It's the lack of responsibility for um, for January 6th. It's the lack of responsibility for the um, for the um, for the Gretchen plot. Uh, it's the uh, lack of accountability. For I don't think it's really a responsibility for conservatives to take accountability for January 6th. Like, there's a lot of people that were not really supporting January 6th, and it just happened. In the same way that, like, there's Charlottesville or anything else. Question marks? No, no, that's not that's not the case at all. Uh, he pushed it? No, no, what I'm saying is that... So, there's a big problem that I think people have with something that's, like, effectively shared guilt. And just because you have, like, one political opinion doesn't mean that you have the shared guilt of, like, the actions of the people with that opinion. So when you hold a person accountable for something they didn't do and they didn't necessarily support and you constantly try to make them defend that thing or like justify it or condemn it, a lot of times those people that like they weren't at the Capitol, they might not even support doing that. They might say, hey, yeah, I don't know if the election was rigged or not, but I don't agree with storming the Capitol. They might think that the election wasn't rigged and they just lost. Like there's a lot of people that just don't actually have any real shared accountability for that. Like, I'm very confused. Yeah, uh, many support it. I agree with you. I think many of them do support it, but all of them don't. And I think the problem is whenever you treat everybody like, like, whenever you treat somebody like everybody, because fundamentally, whenever you take a person who says, I'm conservative, and then you say, hey, that means that you have this, 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 and this, you are fundamentally dehumanizing that person because you're not looking at them as an individual with their own views. You're looking at them as an extension of the group that they're part of. And that's bad in any circumstance. That's bad if you do that based on race, gender, age, or anything, or, or like uh, religion, any of this stuff. It's, it's always bad. So it's the same exact thing. Uh, I, I, I don't think that it's fair for people to be accountable that Oh, wow. Other people that are, you know, related to this cause did something bad and now this is my fault. No, it's not. You didn't do it. And in often cases, people don't support it either. I I'm very confused by this. 60% of Republicans think that it was Solon. That means 40% don't. Did you see what I'm saying? That's massive. It's guilt by association. Yes. But that's an extreme viewpoint. I agree. It should be zero. It should be zero. But you're not going to get it to zero by getting mad at the 40%. It's not going to happen. It's pointless. Asking them to condemn something that they never were a part of. It's insane. This is some original sin, original sin shit. Stop. It's so weird. It's cult mentality. Yes. Holy fuck. No, people are not a monolith just because they have a, a, a general viewpoint. It's crazy. Bro, it's a majority? I agree. I, I don't know if it's a majority or not. People say it's 60%. Let's say it is. True. It is. That's a lot of people. That's really bad. For sure. I agree with you.
But I still don't think that you should take individual people and try to make them accountable for what they didn't do. It's two separate things. 40% is still a person isn't 40%. Shitty take, Asman? Wrong, completely made up stat, by the way. It's crazy how stupid some people are. Or but, but by your yardstick. By BLM protesters. Right, by your uh, yardstick. By your uh, yardstick. For all of these. Yeah. By your yardstick, what the Republicans should do in response is simply say, fuck all of them. Fuck they them all. Who cares? Are. Pierce, that's what you're not understanding. Pierce, listen to me. This is what you're not understanding. Okay. You keep you keep bringing this up to me. Like, well, Destiny, if you act like this, aren't conservatives I just going to do... Back your words and then you say you. a thing, but they, they've they done this for eight years. Right, so the other, side is, to do it. the other side is horrendous. Therefore, I'm going to be even more horrendous. Yeah. It's so unprincipled. That's the horrendous part about the conservatives isn't just the rhetoric. It's the underlying factual denial of reality. That's the big issue. That's the huge issue. That's the big bad let part. Charlie, let, me bring, let me bring Charlie back to respond to that. Charlie? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the opposite. I think that, Destiny, you are completely fueled solely off of emotion, whereas I think that, I'll say conservatives, even though I think that it spans past conservatives, when they look at the facts of the summer of BLM, the BLM movement as a whole, January 6th, uh, this assassination attempt, when you look at the facts, things unfold before your eyes, and they reveal themselves to be actually what they are. There's a lot of evidence that have come, has come forth since all of these events in the past have occurred. And they have shown that exactly what conservatives were saying were absolutely correct. Just like what about the elections? I mean, like exactly. the assassination attempt Wait, sorry, on what, Saturday, what, what we saying? look at what went wrong. We look at not only not only was this one rooftop unguarded, but how did the gunman know that the rooftop was unguarded? Why was it that local law enforcement alerted? There the Secret yep. Service moments before well, actually, there is, shots were you say fired. There it is. There is, is a. There is, is actually a very do you good think, question. Do you think January six? Do you think J six was a false flag? I think January six. There's a lot of discussions to be had. I think there's a lot of facts there that came is. forward. Yeah, there definitely. Guys, yeah. See, no, this. He's right. Destiny's right. It was obviously bad. January six was obviously bad. There's no defending it. It. It was a joke. It made Trump look like an idiot. The people that went in there were wrong for doing it. They should have never done it. This, so, and, and this is what I fucking hate. The reason why you have the extremism like this is because you can't call out going in there, walking out of the, the fucking government building, carrying shit with you as being just wrong. It's wrong. You shouldn't fucking do that. You shouldn't go in and sit at random senators' desks out of fucking nowhere, looking through all of their shit. This is, it's, it's not even a question. How, how is this, uh, how do you even for a second say it's anything other than bad? And this is why the extremism happens. They want to hang Mike Pence. I, I understand that. But I, I'm just saying at a base level, it was a bad thing to do. I'm not even using the extremes. It was bad. And I think that she, like, do you see what I'm saying, right, about how her not immediately condemning it and saying this was a bad thing causes destiny to not immediately condemn the shooting? Do you see how these two things are like, it's like this fucking, uh, you know, just like, it's like an arms race of being fucking retarded. Because politics has been made, like, really accessible and it's been made to appeal to, like, lowest common denominator people. Those types of people that think about it think with their emotions and they're stupid. That's really the reason. They're just stupid. And a lot of people like her, I bet that if you asked her privately, if she thought January 6th was bad, she would say that it was bad. So why aren't they saying it publicly? They're not saying it publicly because there is a massive contingency of the unwashed masses of people that are complete fucking morons that can't hear anything that's counter to their belief system or they will completely turn on you and think that you're a traitor. That's the reason why people talk around it is because if they think if they do that, they're going to lose that support. The fact that you look that up on Wikipedia doesn't stop Ted from being stupid. It doesn't stop Ted and Bill and Gary and, uh, you know... <laughs> Bill, uh, it doesn't stop them from doing anything.
Rufus, yeah. I have never, I will never see, give sympathy is... to this side. These guys really? are destroying the yeah, country. Destiny, destiny. 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 There, there were destiny. agents, there were agents. For a single, for a single thing to Hang on, there were agents present. Destiny. present. We know for a fact. Destiny, here's your, here's your problem there with me. There were agents present on January 6th. We saw the tourists being ushered mm -hmm. into the Capitol oh, building. Being They're being in. treated being like terrorists. In. And in fact, and in fact, and actual, in fact, several months ago, Vivek Ramaswamy said it is it's no, only fair no. that we're I able mean, to if they were ushered in, were they ushered out with all of their stuff? I mean, were they ushered into the, the individual rooms? I mean, what are we talking about here? Have a decent conversation about okay, all of this. Okay, let me let me say and in what fact, I, let we're me not say, able to have a conversation let me, about let me just say, let me just say, like you. You let me just say what I think about January 6th because I wrote it at the time and I believe it today. I thought it was a shameful attack on the heart of American democracy. It was an attempt to thwart democracy taking place. It should never have happened. Everyone involved in any violent act that day was utterly shameful. Donald Trump's rhetoric that day was appalling. All those things are completely true, Destiny. I can happily subscribe to that. Neither of your but, other but, guests. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. thing. There, if I'm Neither a, of these guests agree with But if I'm that. a Republican, no. Pierce, do you understand? No. Pierce, but if Pierce, I'm is, a, Pierce is right. He's right. It should have never happened. Republican, yeah, but here's the thing, Destiny. Said. If I'm a Republican listening yeah, yeah, to you, yeah. I'm thinking, hang on. This guy thinks we're all disgusting. We're reprehensible. They we have no empathy. Nothing we have no this, no that. Absolutely and yet he himself changed. is proud of being even more disgusting. Yeah, no. I think it's a reactionary position, too. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And then I would say, wow, well, nothing has changed from since before COVID, yeah. before the vaccines, before J6, when they thought the election was stolen, when they thought that we were forced into lockdowns for no reason, when they thought that George Soros and the World Economic Forum uh, and, the, and, and, uh, and the IMF banks and everybody were taking over the all country right. and the Federal Reserve was devaluing our currency. Like, okay. it's all the same. Nothing has changed. Let me ask you this. I I'm curious. Wait, can you, can you ask one last question, Destiny? Part, one last question for you. Of characterization of J6? Destiny, one last question for you. But are, I thought, you yeah. are you pleased that Donald Trump got shot? Am I pleased? No, yeah. absolutely not. What is your emotion to the shooting? My emotion is emotionally, what, in terms of his personal health, is absolute indifference. No, do you condemn the shooter shooting Donald Trump? Of course. No. Not, wow. not here, not on this program, not in front of these wow. people. And, and that's the reason. See, he's he knows that it's wrong. And that's why he's qualifying his statement by saying not in front of these people. This is a complete reactionary position. And Destiny knows that it's wrong to try to shoot the president, right? It's obviously a bad idea to shoot the president. But he's not saying it because they're not condemning January 6th. I think that I, I feel like if they had said January 6th was a bad thing and all of that was bad, I bet Destiny would have said, yeah, it was bad to do this. It, it, it's like a. I, I don't even know. It, it's just it's dumb. Do not that. condemn a deranged shooter shooting you are, yeah. Donald you are truly Trump. Just a and child. that's why he said not in front of these people. It's because he knows that it's the wrong position to have, but he doesn't want to have it. Or he's sorry, he doesn't want to push it because out of spite, because he thinks these people aren't giving any ground. I think that's what's going on here. Such a child. I, I'm not I'm just explaining what I think is happening. That's that's fine. You can think that. That's fine. But that's what he. That's why I think it's happening. This is not. Uh, actually, this is it's not. not a no, uh, you know here. what, Charlie? We're just trying to be decent human You know beings. what, Charlie? It's not actually the behavior of a child. It's it's a, it's the behavior of somebody who's completely lost his moral compass and any right. sense of You're decency. Right. You're right. A child wouldn't. And I'm going to go to Dave Rubin. Dave, I want. Let me let Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin, respond to what you've just heard from Destiny. I mean, it's actually one of the most disgusting things that I've ever heard in my life. My entire staff in my studio right now all gasped at that. When I, I happened to be at Target, the store Target, we were checking out when I saw it on Twitter, and my heart actually sank. And I know that that is the feeling of probably 200 plus, if not 300 plus million Americans, even many of whom would vote against Trump and do not like Trump and all of those other things. The idea that you can't show sympathy or empathy for that is is so profoundly sad. I would also add one other thing here, which is that the reason you're so emotive and screaming beyond the Red Bull and dude, just ease up, man, it's not healthy for your heart, is that is that you really don't have good arguments. So you're you're petulant and screaming as opposed to just trying to work things out. We're allowed to ask questions about these things. But I but I would hope 
that you would try, as Piers is pointing out, instead of always reaching for the lowest common denominator and they're bad, so I'll be worse, I would hope that we could try to be a little bit better than that. And by the way, I think that you're seeing that right now at the Republican National Convention. They're not going crazy over all of this. They're applauding the fact that Trump's there. They're, they're rallying around the new VP choice. And I think you're gonna see a wide swath of America that maybe didn't come out for Trump before and they're not traditional conservatives. I, I totally agree. I think you're gonna see them su support I Trump. Totally in, Great. And I would say to you, Destiny. He's right. I, think it's more right. I would say to you, Destiny. The fact that Destiny. The VP choice is a guy who's also said that Donald Trump is like Hitler. Yeah, I, I would say perfect and, cherry and on top to everything. For it and said he got it wrong. Yeah, uh, I would say uh, this yeah. to you, Destiny. Lester Holt asked Joe Biden last night, "Has he had any soul searching?" Right. I think after this debate, you may want to just go away quietly and think about some of the answers you've given. And think about yeah. the double standard a of demanding a certain to, pattern of behavior no the from others that you do there not are sign no up to. More standards and you, in look, you may or may not take there are my no advice. More standards. You may or may not take my advice. I'm just saying, on reflection, you might conclude that the best way to persuade other people to behave in a better way is not to behave in an utterly degrading way yourself. That's all. I think deleting a YouTube channel only takes one click, Destiny. No, it doesn't. Right. Yeah, right after you, Dave. OK, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all very much to my panel. I appreciate it. It's like five clicks, I think. It takes a while. You have to confirm it and then like the email and everything. Yeah, it's, it's not even true. Fake news. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, I think this entire conversation was a complete waste of time. I think that everything that they were saying was basically the Cold War of but being unreasonable. I think that it's unreasonable to say to say anything other than January 6 was bad. Like insurrection, illegal, traitor, all of these words I'm not using these words. I'm using one word, bad. It was bad. It should not have happened. And it's also the same with the assassination. It's obviously fucking bad. Like I, I, I feel like I'm do people criticize me sometimes for saying the obvious thing. I feel like right now I'm actually doing that. I'm actually saying shooting the president is bad. You know, can I get some truths in the chat? It's fucking obvious. It's so fucking obvious. I don't know what to say. I don't know why it's so difficult. It's because the other side won't do it, and so other people don't want to. And then also people don't want to rile up against their uh, their base of people that are not uh you know like not thinkers about it desi's entire point and they're not condemning these heinous acts but they expect it from the other side i know that that i've said i said that all along well, that's why I, I i try to talk about this stuff more is because i think that like my perspective with like almost all politics is that i don't really like care a whole lot about what happens because i just assume that i'm going to survive through it and figure out a way to get through it no matter what so, like, I might have, like, my opinion of how I hope it should go, but, like, I don't really have, like, an emotional attachment to it a lot because, honestly, I, you know, I've got a lot of money. There's nothing that's going to really affect me in a big way, probably. Uh, it's not really going to change my life in a big way. So, Hassan's idiots in chat. Well, that that's fine. I'm sure there's people in my chat that go over to his stream. A and also, I, I think Hassan would probably agree with kind of some of the conclusions that I'm drawing here myself. I think a lot of people would. And I think all these people would too. But the problem is that it's a cold war, and so nobody wants to let up that pressure before somebody else does. And that's why it keeps happening. That's, that's the whole, yeah, that's the whole reason why this is happening.